I'm going to be speaking from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, and uh, I'm going to get more into read the reading. So she'll tell you where it comes from. I'm reading from John 13, verses 1 to 17. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave the world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash, except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. This is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now yet that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. I was uh, pondering on this message. Actually, I did get a hint during the week. I just felt something cropping up, and I thought, well, if I do get to speak, this is what I'll speak on. So I, during the middle of the week, I had made a little note. So um, around about, I'm trying to figure it out, 20 years ago, was it Jess? A mm, bit more, maybe. The, the then youth leader come up with this good idea that it would be a good experience to take the young people to another culture. So he had a con come up with a contact and, and to take them to Uganda. So uh, I said, well, if you like, I'll come along to help. I wasn't, I knew the parents a bit better than perhaps he did. So, and so we had a group of young people going to go to Uganda. I believe it was George and Rosemary. They, they were the ones that are setting up this team. So everything's going okay. Looking forward to this trip. Uh, not been to Africa. Be okay just to be there, be a helper. And then George and Rosemary gave me a ring. And they said, um, we believe the Lord's saying we shouldn't go and that you should lead the team. So I kind of went from just being a helper. So when we got to Uganda, I met up with the team. There was a team from Worcester, a team from Bristol, and our team from Evesham. Now, I'd been given clear brief by George and Rosemary. Now, those Ugandans are trying to get you doing all sorts of things. Now, you, you're not to let them. You're to, to just stick and do this sort of stuff. Well, when I started to talk uh, to the other teams, uh, this is what someone said. He said, whatever it takes to serve the vision, then I'll do that. 
and that came our phrase whatever we uh didn't stick to the rules we did some open air meetings we saw people get saved we saw different things happening but i i want to say what god wants us to be is whatever people because the message that i'm speaking about today is about a servant heart now you know i've been on this christian road for a long time i kind of uh, started it mm, that many years ago 50 odd something like that and yeah when i was 17 the church thought that it would be good for me to have a little job so they said to me would you like to help in the sunday school it wasn't sort of said in a would you you've got a choice way you know and so i went into this helping that i was petrified i didn't know what to do sitting with these group of children I, and then to make matters worse they came up the sunday school teacher came up with a good idea i've got a special job that john can do he can take the register now when you're not very good at spelling and you're with these kids that have gotten complicated names it's really embarrassing saying um, how, how do you spell shokum i died and then after i did this for a few weeks then the sunday school teacher he left and they said john you're going to teach the sunday school oh what could i do well he had left me with a scripture press map and, and in it some material and i began to discover that when it comes to telling the bible stories i actually like telling stories and with this group of kids i i, I could move the story around the map and, and I want to say that's kind of the key to some of the stuff that God's done in my life. Most of the times, it's kind of like, there's nobody else, I can't do it. And God equips, because what God is looking for, is not looking for ability, looking for availability. That's what I honestly believe. If there's anything to my experience, it certainly was an ability who was looking up for in me. It did something in my life when I was, uh, from my earliest years, I wanted to tell people of Jesus. Probably when I was uh, 14, I got converted. Well, until I was 19, I began to seek to know the power of the Spirit. And I led the first two people to the Lord Jesus. They were in my Bible class. They were seven-year-olds. And at the end of my little talk, I said, does anybody want to ask Jesus into your heart? And this lad said, I do. Oh first one and then the next one said oh i want to as well john well the i want to as well john has just retired from being a, a pastor in, in birmingham so we never know what god's going to do do we it's not about ability now listen your ministry doesn't define you your ministry does not define you i am john i am whatever it is that God wants me to be. Now, it just so happens my ministry leaks out of me. I don't have to go telling you what your ministry is because I'll find it leaking out of you. Over the years, when I was preaching, I would, because if you're a preacher, you, know, you get to see everybody's face. And those faces don't hide secrets. You know, week after week when you're seeing faces, and I would see stuff that was going on in their lives and we want to help so my message today is about the servant heart now i'm just going to read a, a couple of passages and um, of what some of the other now mark says this referring to what jesus said for even the son of man didn't come to serve so it didn't come to be served but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many Paul says in Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who in the very form of God did not consider robbery to be, I'll say it again. It's all right, it's when I get excited, I stumble a bit, so I'm going to do it again. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant 
and coming into the likeness of man and being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. You know, if we had lived 2,000 years ago, and if you had met up with Jesus, you'd have just said he was a good guy. It's no different to each because he left aside his godly attributes. He didn't stop being God, but he's all-knowing, all-seeing. He placed it to one side. Now, Luke tells us, and um, actually, on the way to this Passover supper, the disciples were having a bit of a discussion. Um, and it says, now there also was a dispute amongst them to which should be considered the greatest. So these disciples have been together three years and uh, they were arguing about who was the greatest. So I kind of had a little think because I don't know what the argument was. But let, let's give me a, let me give you a speculation. Uh, maybe Peter would say, well, listen out, fellas, you all stayed in the boat. I got out of the boat and walked on the water. I must be the best. Maybe John would say, well, actually, I was with John the Baptist. I was one of his disciples. When he pointed at Jesus and said, look, the Lamb of God. I had another consideration, a fellow called Philip. He might have said, hang on, fellas. I was the one he chose first. Now, we don't know what the debate was about. Isn't it easy for us to fall out about nothing? Don't you find people apart from yourself can be very irritating? Uh, I'll, I'll give you a quote from a friend of mine who used to be part of this church. Edna Pynchon would say to me, there's now the queerest folk apart from me and thee, and I have my suspicions about thee. Now, apart from me, of course, because I'm perfect. Now, let me just apologize for all of the times I irritated you. I never intended to. And I want to tell you that about our fellowship, this is the truth. We get, in, we get irritated by each other, but there's no deliberate intent. Therefore, we've got to deal with it. I'll get into the message in a minute. Therefore, we've got to deal with it. And I have found the only way is to come to the Lord and say, Lord, I forgive them. They may never know about it, but forgiveness, lifestyle of forgiveness, is what we need with each other. Because I want to tell you, this is the best fellowship in Evesham. I am very fortunate to have the privilege of fellowshipping with you. That's my perspective of it. You might see it differently. Now, before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that it had all come to, the time had come to pass. One of the hardest things sometimes is waiting, isn't it? I've got a friend that I'm talking to at the swimming pool, Mark, and he's had a few ills. He's now got uh, some diagnosis of some cancer and is waiting. And the most difficult thing was waiting. But I want to say what it must have been like for Jesus because he knew what was around the corner. Now, he knew about the terror of the cross. I want to suggest there was a worse terror. This is my opinion. The worst terror is this, that he who knew no sin for all eternity became sin for you and me. So Jesus is knowing that the time is coming very near. It says he, he loved his disciples during his ministry. Everything he did with the disciples, even when he told him off, it's because he loved them. I want to tell you there are times when I've felt the Lord tell me off, and I think it's fantastic. I don't mind when the Lord puts me right. The fact that he loves me enough to, to tell me. And, and he, was, he was with them. And he, he knew very soon he wouldn't be with them anymore. Another silly story. When I was 16, I cycled from Kent to Torquay on my bicycle with no gears, 250 miles. 
I took my friend who was 15. People were a bit nervous, can't understand why. And uh, before I left, my dad had a word with me, you know, parting words. He said, son, remember you don't own the road. It just was trying to give me something of value because this was, the, who knows what was going to go on. I don't know that he thought I was going to die, but never mind. He was just in that stage. And this is what Jesus is saying. This is the context now. This is the love of the heart of Jesus. Something is about to happen. There's going to be a, a, a change in the way things work in this world. There's going to be a, a change. The kingdom of God is about to come. The disciples who've sat with them are going to go through some scary stuff. And so he wants to impart time to them. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything. And he came from God who was going back. There was no question in Jesus' mind. Some other people like to put questions. But there's no question. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God himself. God with man. He dwelled here with us. And he got up from the table. Now, you've got to have a think of what this table's like. As far as I understand, they kind of laid down next, close next to each other in kind of a circle. So they're having a little chat. I don't know what Jesus has said to them, but he gets up and he heads towards the area of the room where the servant does the washing of feet. Now, I reckon it got a bit quiet in the room, especially when he picked up that towel, wrapped it around his way. If what on earth is he doing? That, that's that's, the, that's the, 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 Jesus can't do that. No, no, that's the worst. Of, that's somebody else's job. Somebody else's job. And, and then Jesus began to wash their feet. There was stunned silence. He goes to the first disciple, unlatches his sandal, puts his foot in the bowl and washes it. They're just stunned. He gets to Peter. Peter said, you're going to wash my feet as well. And Jesus said, if you don't let me do this, you have no part of me. So good old Peter. Well, if you can do me feet, you better do the whole job, you know. <laughs> but Jesus had already done the whole job. He said, it's not necessary. Now, there's a sense that we, and we've been mentioning it in the singing today, in the, the lead up, we've got to do our part in walking close with Jesus. We're responsible for this. Not the bath, because Jesus, when he saved us, he cleaned us. But we've got to stay clean. We've got to live a lifestyle of not only forgiveness, but a lifestyle of repentance. It's part of the journey. It isn't a one-off thing. It isn't, Lord, I'm sorry, come into my life. Now I can do what I want. Whoa, when you love somebody. And, and you have to understand, I love my wife very much. I don't always get it right with her, but there isn't anything that I wouldn't do for her. Now, if that's in an earthly sense, and Jesus loves me with everything, how much more should I just adore him? And when I was reading it, I had this crazy thought. I thought if I'd have been there, he'd have taken off my trainer. And then he'd have taken off my sock. And he'd have washed my feet. Because what Jesus is doing is, is reaching out to his disciples in their situation because he knows what's around the corner. Now, nothing took God by surprise about today. He had it already planned. And he comes to us in love. You see, what we give away is what we've got. Do you remember when the beautiful gate, there's a man that's been lame from birth, and Peter goes to him, and the man says, have you got anything you can give me? Because he was begging. And he said, I don't have silver and I don't have any gold, but what I've got, I'll give to you. Now, I want to tell you that is the truth about everybody here today. What we got is what we get away. The more we get of God, the more we give away. The more we get of the Spirit of God, the more we give away. And, and, and really, what 
God is doing. And I, I believe that uh, the Lord sent Neville and there's a, a fresh move of the Spirit going on. And it is our responsibility to, to be involved in seeing how we can be a servant to the vision, seeing what there is that we can do for the fellowship. Now, probably if you look at the tea rotor, you'll find they've had to put in an extra sheet of paper. Do you think? Do you think there's so many names down there? Or do you think it'd be blank? Because you see, I remember years ago, I've been here a long time, so I can say years ago, someone was approached, because in them days we had deacons, they looked after the practical things, and the elders who were spiritually responsible still are, but in them days it was kind of like these two bodies. And, and a nice person was approached to be a deacon. Somebody said, because you had to put their name forward, and he said, actually, I'm more eldership material. It was a long time ago and you won't know so it's all right <laughs> anyhow we're called to be servant-hearted jesus said you don't understand now what i'm doing but you will after washing their feet jesus put on his robe again and sat down do you understand personally i don't reckon they did he said, one day you will do. And the reason that the church of Jesus Christ exploded was out of love. It wasn't out of violence. It wasn't out of aggression. It wasn't out of lectures. It wasn't out of arguments. Our faith is birthed in love. And Jesus said, as I, the Lord, your teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash each other's okay you ought to and I, I know one of my journey times when I went for a personal crisis time and uh, I, I was in great stress uh, I, I came to this conclusion I didn't feel I loved I thought nobody understood nobody loves me and all that sort of stuff and uh, I said to the Lord because he told me off as he does said I was being selfish how can you understand? I'm not being selfish. I'm just hurting. So I said to the Lord, okay. I can laugh about my own difficulties, can't I? I said, okay, what I will do every day, I will ask you for something. I can do some for somebody else. So I began every day. Lord, will you help me to see someone I can serve today? Someone I can be of a help to today. I want to tell you the weirdest thing. After I began to try and love on people, the love that I found I was looking for, I got. Because you see, you can't grab it. If you grab hold of it, you miss it. It's one of those things you get it if you give it away. I've given you this example to follow. Do as I have done, for I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than the master. Now, you know these things. God will bless you for doing them. Now, I'm going to finish with this line, and then I'm going to pray, and I'm going to hand back to John. <coughs> what Jesus said, I'll read it so we can all hear it. Now that you know these things, did we get that? Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Or maybe I only thought about that last bit in the last bit when I was asking God for someone that I could bless each day. Might be something we could take on board. Anyhow, I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this, what you're doing in our fellowship. We want to thank you, Holy Spirit, for the fresh way you're blowing through this place lord we want to say we want to serve the vision we want to play our part we come to you and uh, ask you that you would help us not to be complainers but bless us 
not to be the ones who let everybody else do the, the stuff, the serving stuff, but for each one of us to get involved in loving on each other where we can. In Jesus' name, amen.